Hey guys, Terry Red here. And in this video, we're talking about the DUF Config Creator Sheet, the table template, how it works and how you're gonna use it. We're just going through the basics of how to add or remove an effect or a DUF command, uh, how to make a simple change and what you need to do when you're all done uh, to make it so that you can properly copy it to DUF Config Tool. So watch this uh, to learn the basics, watch the entire video, please. But also make sure you watch my previous videos so that you'll understand uh, how to, the DUF Config Creator Sheet works in terms of all the different sheets. And uh, also watch these videos to learn more about how DUF works, how DUF commands work, and uh, how DUF Config Tool works. It's uh, gonna help you out a lot by watching those. So. All right, so here we go. You want to make uh, a new, complete new uh, config for a table. So here's what we're going to do. Or you're just going to add stuff to it. You're going to make a copy of your template. You do not use uh, the same one because, you know, you want to use that for future reference. So just rename it to whatever you want. Now, hopefully you guys have some basic understanding of Excel because, you know, I'm not going to go through explaining all aspects of Excel, but I am going to explain how it works with this sheet. So we've renamed our sheet. So the, the areas where you can make changes to are what I'm highlighting here, the text up here, and also these cells uh, in between the red lines. All right, I'm just going to, I mentioned that in the previous videos, but I'm just going to reiterate that. Those are the only places you're actually making any changes to information. So, uh, so make your changes to up here. Uh, let's say uh, table test, just whatever you want to call it. And then you can change your uh, system to what you want, your table to whatever you want, and your ROM name to whatever you want, and then change this to whoever made uh, the, the, the sheet. You can put credits on there if you want. All right, so now that we're uh, set up with our uh, sheet, we're going to uh, start making our changes. So if you want to, for example, use the template, but you got to get rid of the stuff you don't want first, that's extremely important. Do not leave extra commands left over that are not being used. If you don't know what they are, get rid of them uh, because you don't want extra stuff in there uh, in your config because you know, you're going to have stuff in here somewhere that may be referencing something that you're not using and you don't want that. So again, this is a template. This is just with examples of everything you guys need to use. It's not a ready to go final. You still have to make your changes, right? So so all, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove a whole bunch of stuff just to make this simple for you guys to see. So I'm gonna remove all these guys here. So these are addressable LEDs. Uh, I'm just gonna remove them for now. So we're gonna re remove those, okay? And then now I'm not doing DUF, so I'm going to remove all of these guys as well. Okay. So remove what you don't want. Okay. So I don't have a whole lot here, but it's just to make it easier for you guys to see the basics. Now you notice something changed, something happened. See this here? It's causing a fit. It's like, what the frick is going on? The reason why that happened was when you add or remove an entire uh, row like this, or, you know, then what happens is it affects everything in the green section here, all right? So it's basically the green section has to know how to assemble all your commands. And when you add or remove a row, sometimes that disrupts that. So you will take care of that. That's the very last thing you're gonna do, all right? Anytime you go back in here and add or remove a row, you have to then, fix this after the fact and we'll, we'll do that after it's very simple very easy uh don't worry but you will be doing that every time so all right so let's say we have our slingshots here so we want to make a simple change so anytime we want to update or create effects we have to change two specific things we have to change the trigger and then if it's a, a red green blue, blue device like addressable leds you have to change your color now the time you don't have to change because it's already uh, pre-determined uh, what you need. And the second color, unless there's something in there that's actually entered or used, leave it blank. You don't put anything in there unless there's already a color in there. All right, so for the slingshots, all I gotta do is change the triggers. So let's say I uh, had to choose to uh, switch 
34 for the left and switch 36 for the right. Now, if you don't know what the triggers are supposed to be, what type they're supposed to be, just look up here, trigger device, and drop down. You can see S for solenoids, L for lights, W for switches, uh, E for EM or original tables or future pinball tables. So uh, visual pinball is the only one that's going to be using these three for pin name ROM based tables. Visual Pinball will use th this for uh, EM or Originals, or Future Pinball will use that. So uh, now for colors, whatever you want. You can use the drop-down menu, uh, or you can type it in, but it's got to be a correct color. So let's say I do green, and I do blue. All right? It could be whatever you want, guys. So that's all I've had to do for the slingshots. I just change the trigger, change the color. That's it. They're ready to go. Now, let's say I wanted to use a different effect for the slingshots. So I would go to either my MX effects sheet, this one here, to find something I would like to use. And you have to make sure it's the right kind of a toy to match, right? Like for if you want to make it similar or whatever you want to do, it's up to you guys. Experiment, play around, do whatever you want. But, you know, find the effect you want to use either in here or you can look into Pinball MX. Uh, some of them are going to be similar ones. Uh, some of them are just a, a second example. So we've got another example here that does a, a different effect with sparkly slingshots. So I'm just going to copy the whole rows. And I'm going to paste them over top of the ones that are there. And there you go. It's already got the information in there. Now, you'll notice that a couple things are different. Obviously, we have to update our triggers again. And our colors, if we want to, you know, whatever they, whatever you want them to be, you know, <laughs> like, uh, let's say red. I'm just throwing anything in here, guys. All right. So that's all we needed to do for that. And you'll see it already had the times that we needed for that. Now, you'll notice there's nothing over here. Again, for the same reason that we'll have to fix that later on. Okay, all we're entering information in is these sections here between the reds. Remember that. Okay, uh, so now let's say we want to add another bumper. All right, so we can just insert below there, and then I can just pick whichever bumper effect I want, copy, paste. And there you go. And then all you do is you change your change your uh, switch values or solenoid, depending on what you're using, right? And if you guys don't know what to use for these, well, you're either gonna have if it's a ROM based table, you're gonna have to look either in the service manual or the service menu in the game while you're playing it to test it to find out what they are. Or you can look in DOF config tool and see what may have already been added for that table. Uh, so again, and, and also the table script uh, the, or the table editor for the table may help out with that as well. So again, you guys have to figure out where those are. I'll go through that on my next video, which is a full table example. So don't worry about that right now. This is just for a simple reference. Uh, for you guys to understand how to use this. Now, this one here uh, uses a combination of triggers uh, for the same effect to happen on all those other triggers. So in other words, I want is this effect to happen either with W2, W3, W4, oh, I actually kind of messed that up, hold on a second, I'll fix that, or W5. Okay, so what that means is, and I'm going to fix this here, <laughs> W5. All right, there we go. So what that means is, because we have multiple ones separated by a pipe, anytime W2 triggers, this effect, this whole effect will trigger. Anytime W3 triggers, this effect triggers, or W4 it triggers, or W5 it triggers. So you can do one line for multiple triggers of the same effect. All right, so that's an example of how, you know, you can do a whole bunch of stuff on one line. And again, use my template. I've got a whole bunch of references uh, that you can use to see how that's done. Now, those are all good. But what if we want to add an effect that uses multiple toys? Like, for example, the left matrix, the right matrix, and the back matrix. All right, well, then go to the effect sheet. Look for the effect you want. 
So let's say we can find uh, this one here. So electrical arcing effects. So you can see it uses a back, a left, and a right, and they're all using the same trigger. Now, we can't have all of these on one single line because they have to use a separate toy. So they have to be different ones. You can have multiple toys triggered by the same trigger uh, if you want. You know, you can have one single trigger affect 10 different toys at the same time. In this case, I'm using all three of the LED, uh, addressable LED matrices to create one single effect. So all I do is I select all these guys here. And I go to my table. Now I'm going to have to insert lines so that they, they'll show up. Because you got to have space for them to be sure. All right. And then I'm just going to highlight these guys and paste. All right. So now we have those guys added in. And then all we do is we make whatever changes. So let's say it's W7, W7, W7. Because this one effect uses the same trigger, right? And then if you want to change the color, you can. I'm just going to leave it out white. And same with these guys here for the bumpers. If you want to have, you know, red, yellow, blue, or green, whatever, you can make that change. Cyan, whatever you want, right? All right, so therefore, we've got a few basic effects ready to go. You know, we've shown how you can make a simple edit, how you can add, how you can remove, and how you can have uh, multiple toys for the same trigger effect. All right, so now, now let's say we're all done, okay? We've got all our stuff in there. We want to try to test it to use on our cab. All right, so before we can do any of that, remember what I mentioned, there's a final step you have to do every single time. The reason why is when you add or remove stuff, you may have forgotten about, you know, what you may have uh, changed or done over time. And the formulas and the green cells will get mixed up. So when you're ready to test, Every time, what you need to do is you go over here, you select all the green cells on the top. This is our first line that has all the formulas we need for every toy. And then you're going to select all the cells underneath. And you're going to paste below. All right. So paste special formula only. Now, now. To point out, you're also including the green line on the bottom. I wanted to make sure you guys understood that. So we're copying from the top one, and we're pasting all the way down, including the green in the bottom. And we're going to paste special formula only. Make sure you do that. And watch what happens. After we do that, boom, everything is magically now filled in and working. It's taking all of these DOF commands here, and it's putting it in the right toy and assembling all the multiple commands to work together. All right, so now you can see they're showing up down here for whatever uh, stuff we had. So you can see this one back effects has a whole bunch of commands all put together on one line instead of you having to do it one at a time. And now that you have your stuff ready to go, you would just copy. So in this case, it's the back effects. And I would look for it on the table that I was editing. So I'll use this one as an example. So yes, back effects is right here. So then I would just uh, erase that whole line. And then I would paste our new effects in there. And same with uh, the left. So let's see our left effects, same thing. And same with the right effects. Where's our right effects? There we are. All right. And then when you've pasted all your commands in, you would then click Save. And then it tells you that your private configuration for this table has been saved. And you can see it's showing what I've done that's different compared to the public configuration, right? So that's it. That's, the, that's all you need to do for uh, using the table template. And then when you're done, after you saved it, you would generate a config. 
and then you'll copy that to your CAD's uh, DOF config uh, directory there for your DOF config files. And it, you gotta wait a moment because it, it can take a moment to generate the the file. Man, it's taking a while here. <laughs> Be patient. It'll come. <laughs> there we go. All right. So then you save the file and you open it up. And you make sure you copy all the files over and replace them. And now you test it on your cab and see how good it looks. And that's it, guys. So that's it for the basics of how to use the table template. You make your changes. You follow the You make your changes in here. And when you're all done, you can do the copy and paste of the formula in the green cells. And then when you're done that, you then copy and paste from your completed cells down below into the toy you need for DOF config tool. And you save it here, generate the file, and you copy your new configs over the test. Now, let's say you guys wanted to change something. You know, you weren't happy with an effect. Well, because you've already set up everything correctly, you don't have to go through the entire process anymore. You could go through and change a trigger to, uh, let's say, 77th. Okay? You notice now it's showing the correct one down here because all the formulas are correct still, right? Uh, if I want to change this to blue, same thing. It's working down here. Now, let's say I wanted to do an effect on a different toy altogether. So uh, let's say the bumper center here. All right, let's uh, say I wanted to change that to a completely different toy. So if I click on this and I go to say this one here, now you can see it's showing up down here. All right, so it uses whatever toy is here to figure out what DOF command will get added to the toy down here. As long as the formulas are all good, then all that will work. But if you make any changes, watch watch what happens here. If I if I remove these guys, let's say I remove the bumper center. Okay, let's say I remove this guy. All right, it gets messed up all over again. So that's why you then have to go over here, and then you do your copy and your paste again. All right. I, I know it seems like I might be repeating some of this stuff, but it's important that you guys know this because uh, if you do this every time, then it'll work perfect. And that's it. See, it, it's very simple. If you make any changes to a, 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 a row after the fact, if you remove one or add one, you have to copy and paste those cells again uh, for the formula. So. That's it for that's it, guys. That's it for using uh, the table template. Uh, you know, uh, once you've gone through it a couple times, it's very quick and easy. You know, it takes longer for me to explain it than it does for you guys to actually do it. So uh, when you're all done, the only thing I would ask uh, is uh, be mindful of uh, you know what you are uh, doing with DOF config tool. You you can change whatever you want on the right side here for any table. That's your own private configuration. So. Do whatever you feel like, no problem. However, see this button here, the submit for public consideration. Do not click on that unless you are updating a table's address. Like if a table doesn't have addressable LEDs, like effects or anything added to it, and you're completely updating it, then absolutely, you know, submit for public consideration in that respect. But don't do that. Don't submit for this if it's something that's already been done. Use your own private config, but don't submit for public because what will happen is if the, if that gets replaced, if the, what will happen is this one on the left side here gets replaced with whatever you submitted, and then all of a sudden everyone now will ha that's all they'll have to use. So keep that in mind when you're uh, adding this stuff. Don't use this unless you know what you're doing, okay? Unless you really, really know what you're doing. My, myself, uh, I, I'm one of the few that actually does full updates to tables and Arngram does and a few others. So again, for private configs, do whatever you want for for uh, submitting for public consideration only 
if it's a table that has not had a complete uh, DOF and addressable LED uh, configure already done. So uh, that's it. That's it, guys. So uh, maybe uh, use this for reference in the future. I hope it was very helpful. I hope you'll be able to create some cool stuff with this. Uh, watch my next video. I'm going to be doing an entire, well, mostly an entire uh, tables addressable LED configs. Uh, so you can see the start and end process. It'll be similar to this one, but I'll use actual references and then I'll do a demonstration of how it looks after the fact and everything else. And I'll go through the whole thing with you guys. So watch for that one. Uh, it'll be very handy and I'll see you in that video. So have fun guys. Hope you can make some cool stuff and I'll love to play it. See ya.